seconds out, Eamon Khan here with a former British bantamweight champion, the untouchable Cash Fruit. Cash, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm keeping well, I mean, I hope you're, I hope you're well as well. All good, all even better to connect with you again. Cash, we've just witnessed Nyoya anyway become the undisputed bantamweight champion, defeating Paul Butler in the 11th round. How did you see that fight? To be honest, uh, Cena uh, one sided uh, towards the new, and um, it just looked as if it was a new just chasing down the fight. And Paul, uh, Paul Butler never looked really refused and more of a way trying to win the fight. I mean, and uh, just. Uh, He's had his hands up and um, he's just moving around, moving around. And uh, he had to be bust, you know, main and bust. You know what I mean? But you are, you are talking about he was, a, he was in with a, one of the best fighters on the planet. You know, this generation could maybe, maybe say, you know I mean, last, you know I mean, last, maybe you know, over the over the years, you know I mean? He's been one of the one of the great fights, you know. Cash, how do you defend against that level of power that, in a way, carries? You know, it's I don't know to be honest. I couldn't. I can't really. Only Paul Butler would know how how hard he really punches. And uh, obviously, eleventh the eleventh round it showed. You know, I mean, how Paul Butler has never been stopped. And uh, you know, and he's. I think he was really really tough going the eleventh round uh, all the way eleven rounds. You know, what I mean, and I can you know just turned the gas on just uh, him, go with a good shot and put him uh, took him out. You know, but it's one of the ones, you know, I mean, he is he is one of a great fighter that carries freakish power the little weight. Do you see any flaws in Inouye's game? It seemed like he was getting frustrated by Paul Butler. Maybe that's a little bit of a flaw, but outside of that, do you see anything that in his game that you think maybe he can be um that a, a future opponent can take advantage of? To be honest, only, only if he goes up in weight, I think that's where he's gonna have really trouble. The guys are gonna be bigger, really bigger, and they can maybe take it take his punches. But yeah, Bantamweight, I don't think so anybody beats him now. He's he is gonna go up, and uh, this is where he's gonna really get tested. Whether whether he's uh, you know, many if he can uh, beat them at the higher weights, but but I do think he's gonna get really tested at the higher weights. You know what I mean, a super Bantamweight. But yeah, Bantamweight, I think he's he's beat everyone they put in front of him. Stephen Fulton is the fight that people are clamoring for, calling for, in a way, versus Fulton, uh, which is, sounds like a great fight in the offing. Hopefully we get that next year. Um, is Stephen Fulton the guy that you think that bringing that weight up, if in a way steps up to that weight, will cause him those problems? Yeah, 100%. I think he is a guy to cause him trouble because he naturally is a bigger guy. You know, and, uh, and uh, sometimes going up in weight, and you as a power might not carry with him. And that was, he's went up in four weights, but some man to be, could be a, maybe a step too far, you know. And uh, um, Stephen Fulton maybe can give him, uh, give him a lot of trouble. If I just, I just think he's just physically so big as well. And uh, I think he can maybe see if he can take a new power. Then I think uh, he can beat him definitely. Would you pick Fulton to beat him? To be honest, I, I don't know whether I would pick him, but I would cause him to. I would. Uh, I would predict him to cause trouble to uh, mm. for a new. You know what I mean? You know, I don't know whether I'll pick him to win, win but because I do think Anu is a great, great fighter, and I do think it's gonna be someone. That, it's gonna take a special fighter to be him, a, a really, really special fighter to be him. But uh, I do do think someone a super band to me is gonna needs to be really, really good to be him, really good. Is the new way? Go. I'm saying that we're only gonna find out once he steps up and who you, uh, who he's up against, and and you know, and uh, what he does a super band to me. Is in a way your pound for pound number one cash? I would probably at the lower weights, I would probably say so, yeah. At the lower weights, uh, but the moment I'd probably say for my one, it's probably probably Uzak number okay. one, or maybe or Terence Crawford, even or I would probably say I. So you'd have maybe uh, in a way at th- uh, number three? Yeah, I'd probably out again, probably top, top three, probably I'd say I'm, uh, I'm, I'm up there. He, at the lower weights, definitely, he's probably the best one at, at the lower weights. Mm-hmm. Cash, moving on from in your way, let's let's take a look at yourself. I, I read an article um, from the BBC that you did and wanted to speak to you after that. It was you, you know, mentioned that you wanted, wanted to get back onto your feet now that you kind of settled into your retirement. How have you found uh, your retirement so far? Yeah, I'm obviously I'm just uh, I'm still I'm still moving the boxing and I'm in and uh, you know I'm still I'm in the gym every day every day of the night. I'm doing my personal training through through the day, the morning time and. Uh, Night time, I've got my, I'm night time, I uh, train the amateurs. And uh, with the most system, I'm with my man, man just around to his club. So 
yeah i'm just uh, things are just um uh, take i'm just taking things by day by day you know what i mean and week by week I, I watched an interview recently it was with um boxing king media and it was Kel Brook was asked about how he found retirement. He seemed quite dejected. He seemed quite a little bit lost. I mean, what, in your own words, is has your post career life been like so far? I would probably say it's quiet. You know, it's no, there's no many, there's no many highs anymore. The mm. boxer, I think your life's always up, then it's down. Then you get fights, then you're always, you're always looking forward to. There's always, I don't know, you're always looking forward to the next fight, the next stage you're. Next stage, and uh, as a boxer, I think only I can I can only say that about myself. You know, what I mean, I can every fight you're always looking forward to. You know, what I mean, in training camps, fight week, weigh-ins, you're always looking forward to that. And uh, I think once that stops, it's uh, it's really, really difficult. You know, especially I, I was only twenty five to retire at a young age. I thought I always yeah, you probably read the interview. I thought it was gonna come in the early thirties by the time, and then because uh, I wanted to get bored of boxing before I retired, but then I would happen. Mm-hmm. Tash, if you let's hypothetically, if you got a brain scan, let's say next week, and everything came up clear, would you look to come back? No, nah, to be honest, uh, I don't. I don't. Have to, nah, really. This is this is one thing that I think now. And now it's done. I don't want to come back now, and that's it. Even if I if they gave my grand my license tomorrow, I wouldn't want to box anymore. I think that's mm-hmm. it done now. Because I'm over. I'm over that part. I'm not gonna. I don't. I don't want to fight anymore. I'm over that part. I can definitely see. See, even even they grant my license tomorrow, I wouldn't want to fight anymore. So that's that's just, just you just uh, you just uh, wish it never uh, ended like that. You even though you know um, you may be saying you're over the fighting part, you look still in fighting shape, catch. Yeah, well, I still I've still got my same routine. To be honest, I still get up and run. I don't punch anymore, but I still get up and run, and I still do my weight. I still do weights. And just to keep myself taken over, and I'm in the nighttime amateur, so I'm just uh, I'm always on to- my toes, you know, I mean, doing things, and see with my uh, eating routine, I've always I've still kept it the same. I've not let like, go myself wise, just eating well what I want. I can just I've still kept my discipline what I had through as a boxer. Is that is that part of it? You said you know you haven't punched, you haven't thrown. Is that part you don't want to you know entertain that? You don't want to throw any punches. Nah, I don't really mess it. To be honest, I don't really mess punching or. Getting punched as well, so I don't really... <laughs> so I don't, uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't miss anymore. Cash, um, your your time with Saint Andrew's Sports Club, how has that changed your understanding of the game? Yeah, obviously, you're looking at, even as a when you're training people, you look boxing a bit different as you did when you're a fighter. You know, and uh, you just uh, my advice to anybody, you know, I think uh, you've got one career, like obviously you've got one boxing life or one life story you've got. So you want boxing career, I think uh, give hundred ten percent and uh, make the right decisions, you know what I mean? Anything you do in boxing. I saw you had like a nice it was like a testimonial kind of thing at this, I believe it was at the St. Andrew's Sports Club. It was a while back now. Uh, but yeah. a lot of people came out to come see you. It was a very nice moment there, Cash as well. Yeah, it was, you know what I mean? And it was just uh, it was just to reflect back on my career that obviously it was it wasn't a... Um, it wasn't a career, I had a long career, but it was a short career, the success I had. I started at small whole shows and, you know, I never really sold tickets and, you know, I, everything. It was very, very difficult for me to, where I go, where I eventually ended up in my career. So it was, uh, especially up in Scotland, things are always difficult, doing things up in Scotland. It's a bit more, I'd probably say, not easier. If you're good enough that, you know, you can do it down in, in England. But seeing Scotland, it's hard. See, smart, starting at small whole shows and getting your way up. It's very, very difficult. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, fighters like Josh Taylor, they had a good amateur pedigree assignment cycle and promotion. And I never had that. I just I started right at the bottom at small horse shows and I worked my way up into, you know, I mean, Eddie Hunt's uh, assigned where Eddie Hunt, my match room. So it was, uh, I was very, very lucky, I would say. <laughs> Cash, you mentioned that part of your job now is you, your scouting talent. Is there anyone that's taken your eye that maybe we should keep a, keep an eye on? Yeah, up in Scotland, there I would say probably there's a few kids up in Scotland that can, uh, that you know, I mean, I don't know what the plans are, but you know, I think they can maybe, in a few years time, they can maybe potentially go on to become really, really good pros. You know, obviously, you also just signed Sean Lazarini and uh, Matthew Matty Mahill from the Commonwealth Games, mm-hmm. one one bronze and one one gold. So they'll they'll on they'll go on to do really, really well as uh, professionals. Uh, my my opinion, you know, what I mean. Mm-hmm. And Cash, where will this you know, post career 
post fighting career life take you? Where do you want it to take you? What's your kind of goals with this this side of your life? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. I hope I'm. I just hope I'm still warm in boxing. That's the that's the hope. Wherever it takes me, I'm still warm in boxing and and uh, wherever it takes me. You know, I mean, you might never get the success you are as a boxer, but you know, it's no, it's no, it's no something. Like, I'm just I'm, I'm long as I'm still warm in boxing. I'm enjoying it. That's uh, I'm happy. You know, I mean. You still watching a lot of boxing? I don't watch. I to be honest, I'm watching boxing, but I'm no. I don't watch it. I don't know how to explain. It. I just watch maybe top of the cards like Josh Wanton's fight. Mm. I only watched uh, that was that was the only fight I watched on the card beforehand. Before when I used to box, I would watch the whole undercard and right up to the thing, you know. But now I just watch the top of the card, mm-hmm. and that's it, you know. And uh, no, to be honest. Uh, it's, you know, as um, you know, as keen on boxing as you were before. You know, I mean, I used to fight. You'd always look forward to the weekend fights, and that now I'm not really too bothered about it. Unless it's a really good fight, then I watch maybe for the whole undercard. Cash, I'll um get a couple of quick thoughts if you, if, uh, from you before I let you go. You mentioned Usyk's probably your number one. We're hopefully going to be getting Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk next year. Um, how do you see that fight going? I think I think Fury's a bit too big for him. Hmm. I think I think he'll just over, I think he'll just smother him and just uh, what he done it to Steve Cunningham. I think uh, Tyson Fury boxed him years and years ago. And I think uh, Uzik might win the first few, five, six, even six rounds. But I think Fury just get on top and uses his weight and maybe knock him out. You know. So my uh, my I would say Fury. I would, I would say Fury to win that fight. Mm-hmm. And then Cash as well. Your your style coming back to yourself was very entertaining. You know forward kind of style uh, do you see anyone in the game right now kind of that has that similar style to yourself that you like to to watch no I think it was probably the Americans uh, here and uh, I think American Americans are quite good at that there's always Americans are always ahead of what they do you know what I mean so yeah I would say Americans are like that we were, you know they've got their own but they've got their own everyone's to be honest everyone has their own unique style and uh, they're good at what they do you know so they, there's no someone that can really box like me or some I can box someone like them. But everyone's got their own unique style that they're good at. Cash, leave the final word for you with people who are looking to follow your journey. Where can they find you on social media? Oh, if they, um, they find me on Cash Rook One and uh, my Twitter's Untouchable Cash Rook, and uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, yeah, that'll be great. Cash, it's been a pleasure speaking to you as always. Uh, looking forward to speaking to you once again. Um, enjoy your time. We'll speak to you very soon.